Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, we built this 48 volt battery pack out of Cal 180 cells. We also took a look at this EG4 LL version two server rack battery. And we also took a look at this EG4 6500 EX. Today, I'm gonna kind of assemble a version one 48 volt power cart. Now this is only gonna be a version one. In the future, I wanna build a nice metal cart, stack the batteries on top of each other and do something a little bit different. But I figure I'll show you guys just the first step and this is mainly so I can use all this stuff because right now it's just sitting here not really doing anything. And my whole goal of this is to power some stuff, obviously power the mini split, which I actually have plugged into the grid right now because none of this is operational. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get this kind of started. So the very first thing I need to do, I went ahead and bought some clamps. So I can squeeze the size of the box together just slightly, just some normal, like normal wood here. And I'm going to put a couple pieces kind of going across just to help put a little bit of side squeeze on these. Not a whole lot. I'm not trying to compress the cells at all. But that's the first step, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you guys when I'm done with that. Also, I did kind of just attach these two by fours. I put a screw from the side, just drilled a little hole in the cart. So each side has a two by four and that's gonna end up holding this big sheet of plywood. So I'll show you guys that when I get that on there. Yeah, anyways, that simple. So I'm gonna do that three more times, then we're gonna go ahead and get the sheet of plywood mounted. All right, so you can see this thing's kind of starting to take shape. Simple is better. When you're just trying to get something up and running, don't focus too much on how you're gonna do it. Just make it happen and slowly make design changes to make it better and better and more of what you want as you go through the process. But don't sit there and think about it too long. Just get building. We didn't use a whole lot of material to make this. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slap the inverter on, lay a couple bus bars out, maybe some wiring. And we're gonna get all that attached, gonna get, get it connected and see if it works. All right, so the inverter is on top. We gonna just kind of laid that there. I went ahead and pre-made my cables and kind of just measured everything out now. And then all I gotta do is put screws in it. This is our PV input. This isn't perfect, but we're gonna run this just for now. Everything's temporary. We can always make it better. So I have my fuse right here. This is a 250 amp mega fuse. So I'm gonna mock everything up first and then I'll put the screws in to hold it down. Okay, boom. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this now so I don't forget to do it. Okay, our connection's nice and tight. I already tightened them up in the inverter itself. Yep, I already have that attached. Okay, good. Now we got our other short bus cable. And if anyone's curious, these are four gauge wires with Harbor Freight copper lugs and marine heat shrink. Kind of my go-to for wire. Okay, so that's kind of the, that's gonna be our power into the inverter. The only other thing I wanna add is a shunt, but I don't have that yet. And basically what that's gonna do, it's gonna tell me total system power. That way I can see what's going in and coming out of the inverter itself. Actually, you know what? Let me see if I have that kicking around. I would like to just throw that on right now. And this is what we're gonna actually install to monitor power in and out of the inverter. These are my favorite. I've used these on a few projects, including the Cal battery actually has one of these to monitor its, all, all its parameters. I really like it because it's got a nice color display. It's easy to set everything up and it has a lot of good information. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the box, get the shunt mounted. I'm not gonna be able to mount the screen yet. I gotta build some sort of thing to hold that, but we're just gonna get the shunt mounted and then we can finish up all the wiring. As far as getting the batteries from there to the bus bars, I went ahead and made some pigtails as well. I haven't put fuses in line with these. These both have BMSs and this has a breaker, but I think I am gonna add some fuses as well just for some extra safety and extra redundancy. Never a bad idea to add extra protection on your circuits. 
But just for now, I'm gonna get these slapped on, get these plugged in. Make sure when you go to hook your batteries together, and I will show you guys this, that they're almost near the same state of charge and voltage as close as you can get. Because when these plug in together, using this on those bus bars, whichever one has more or less power, they're gonna transfer to each other. So I'm gonna get all this installed, get the shunt installed, and I'll kind of show you guys once I'm all done with that. As far as our power in, which is this yellow cable, I went ahead and 3D printed these little hooks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount one here, mount one there, and I'm just gonna wrap that cord around there. This power strip I'm gonna put on that side and just kind of make everything look as neat as possible. All right, we're pretty much done. Got everything pretty well laid out. I have the inverter on and running right now. I have the battery packs connected and the voltage is perfectly stabilized. So when I connected these two, it was already good to go. So no issues there. I did go ahead and install this shunt. Not really happy with how it looks, but that's fine. Only temporary. I do need to install the screen, but first, I need to 3D print one of these boxes because this is what the display looks like. It's the exact same. Anyways, guys, pretty happy with it. This is what I did with the AC cable, like I was telling you guys. Here is our power strip out. Kind of just threw it on there for now. I'm not sure what we're going to do with it yet, but we're just going to leave it there for now. Maybe put some holes, put some screws in it. But yeah, so far, this is it. This is a completely portable 48 volt power system. Pretty freaking awesome. One thing I did notice about this that kind of worried me is I was touching the handles and I felt like I was getting shocked and I put my meter on the metal handle of this battery and it had 124 volts across it so I don't know if there's like any leakage in the system or is because the way the DC hooks up and the way it's all configured in the inverter so what I did to ground this system to properly ground it is I went and had to put a ground right here on the battery where it shows to put it and I took a normal plug I cut the ends off, cut the leads off, and I just put this in the wall. And when I did that, I could touch the handle and not get shocked. So I'm not sure if anyone else has ever experienced that. I didn't know I actually had to like for real, for real ground this, but you probably do. And yeah, so other than that, kind of keep that in mind. If you're going to build something like this, just be really careful. But in this little package is a pretty powerful setup and I'm very happy with it. So now I'm going to go and hook the mini split up, get the mini split running, and I'll show you guys the display with the mini split running. Okay, this thing's up and running. I did go ahead and throw the screen on. I, like I said, I need to make a box to mount on this, so this will all be cleaned up later. I have the power strip on, the mini split, which is this cord plugged in. So the AC is running right now. And as you can see, we're pulling, as you can see, we're pulling about 11, 1,130 watts, not bad. This is not gonna be accurate. I have to set all this up still, but at least I get the voltage and the amperage. So at some point, I'm gonna do a full charge and discharge and see actually how much capacity I have here, but that's 5.1 and in theory that should be another nine. So I'm gonna underrate this setup just to give myself a buffer just because these are used cells and that's it. I'm gonna really get as many life, life cycles as I can out of the setup. I just wanted to show you guys this quick build. As I do more to it, I'll keep filming and making more videos and updates. If I have any issues, I'll make any updates. Like I said, the only thing that really threw me for a curveball is that had voltage on it. So now that it's grounded, it's perfectly fine to touch. I haven't had any issues with it. So kind of keep that in mind if you're gonna build one of these. Let me know what you guys think and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Hey guys, real quick update on the solar generator I'm building. I'm actually editing the video right now. Hey guys, real quick update on the solar generator I'm building. I'm actually editing the video right now. I went to work over, I went to work one day and I had the AC running and when I got home, the entire system was shut off. Turns out I forgot to plug the solar panels into the system and I accidentally completely discharged both batteries down to pretty much 0%. So I did plug the panels in. Today I came home and I just got home and we can actually kind of see what the system actually took. So as you can see, it's not fully charged yet. This is pretty accurate and it's already at 12 and a half kilowatt hours. So I know for a fact this will do at least 12 and a half to 13. And I'm really happy with that because that alone is five. And I was guessing at full power, that one would be nine if those cells were brand new. So it's not fully charged, but just to see that much capacity tells you that this thing has, I guess around 13, and it would definitely have at least that. So super happy with that. This one has taken, it looks like 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours. So that's pretty dang good. Very happy with that. So I did an accidental discharge and charge test. Like I said, because I left the thing on. It didn't discharge the batteries to zero. Look, we have a BMS. I have the, the cutoff for those set to 2.5. But they were both literally so dead, the inverter completely shut off. And I was kind of upset. I was like, dang it, I forgot to plug the panels in. So like I said, today we had a lot of sun. It fully charged throughout the day. This thing can fully charge in one day with the amount of solar I have coming in, which is about 1.8 or which is about 1800 watts, give or take. So that's pretty good. But anyways, I just wanted to kind of throw this on the end of the video. 
kind of explaining that, yeah, I accidentally did a capacity test. That's kind of what we came up with and I'm super happy with that for this kind of setup. But anyways, I went ahead and kicked on the mini split because it's really hot in the house. I'm gonna let this run and do its thing. And I think that's gonna be it for this video and I will catch you guys in the next one.